mai ba an ce kan mu yi zanga zanga ciye wasu sun fito sun yi zanga zanga ba wanda ya musu magana sai mu mun fito yau an ce ba za mu yi ba amma za mu hakura mu muna bin doka ba fada muka zo yi ba mu zo zanga zanga na lumana saboda haka an ce mu bari kenan alamin da ya same mu Nigerians testing the microphone until the D-Day. This happened at the outskirts of Abuja. Around the country, there's one crisis of protest taking place. The government organized a protest against the protest. Let that sink in. They are organizing a protest to tell Nigerians not to come out to protest. They stayed this one at the Eagle Square. As you can see, they could only assemble a few people. But they tried to make it seem as if they represent the entire country. Another one took place in Lagos, but the turnout wasn't as huge as the rally they organized in favor of Tinubu during the campaigns. Security agents are being mobilized around the country. In Abuja, they blocked many highways causing heavy traffic for motorists. The Ego Square seems like a staging ground for the military. As you can see, there is heavy deployment of military personnel and equipment. There are also bulldozers. What are they trying to do with bulldozers? Do they want to scrape the place and start renovating the place? The civil defense, the soldier, the custom, the way, the fire service name. <laughs> Here in Kanu, security agents are out in full force patrolling many streets to deter residents from coming out to protest on the D-Day, which is August 1st. While all this is going on, many Nigerians are experiencing serious telecommunications blackout where their telephone lines have been blocked. It's not clear if it is a deliberate move by the government to stop the protests because if people can't communicate, they cannot be able to organize a protest. The NCC has released a statement telling network providers to quickly unblock the SIM cards of their customers. Let's see how that goes before the D-Day. Now you get the situation in Nigeria, and going by the government's response so far, it seems they are treating this nationwide protest as a coup, that the people want to use this protest to remove them from office like it happened during the Arab Spring and other countries. Yes, it's not far-fetched because they are already spreading the narrative. In that you want to protest against, you want to end bad governance. That mischievously implies that you want to remove the government, which in itself is a treasonable act. Oh, but it doesn't. Not, uh, ending bad governance doesn't mean what is the what is the it perspective of bad government? The idea. Nigerians are not deceived. Calling for the end of bad governance is like calling for an end to insecurity, an end to hunger and high inflation, and all the other things that are affecting Nigerians negatively. The citizens have the right to demand a change from the government. The power belongs to the people, not the other way around. Trying to criminalize a peaceful protest or a call for change is absurd. It can never stand. So instead of using all this negative energy to try to stop the protest, to try to silence Nigerians from demanding for their rights, from demanding for good governance and a change in the style of government, they should use that energy to make serious changes that Nigerians can see instantly. This is common sense, but like they say, common sense is not common. If a baby is crying, the mother will ask her, what do you want? What is it? Please stop crying. And she will say, I want biscuit. Give her the biscuit and she will stop crying immediately. So it sounds very simple, but yet complicated for people in power. The money doesn't belong to them. The money belongs to Nigerian people. The Nigerian people are saying no. The way you are spending this money, we don't like it. Please spend it this way. They are saying no, we must spend it the way we want to spend it. That you don't have any say on how we spend that money. So this is the problem. They are sitting on Nigerian people's wealth, mismanaging the wealth, 
living frivolous lifestyles, doing all sorts of things they want, but Nigerians are saying no, you have to prioritize us because the wealth belongs to us. We can't be hungry and you are talking about increasing taxes, buying airplanes, buying this and that. This is the problem. And to make matters worse, they budgeted 6 billion naira to counter the protest. Whether the 6 billion naira will be used to mobilize security agents around the country or whether they will use it to support the people promoting the counter protest, that's the no protest group. The most important thing here is that they are using Nigerian people's money to fight them. The government's handling of the nationwide protest is counterproductive. Trying to scare Nigerians from coming out to protest will seriously backfire. The reason a date was set for this protest was to give the government enough time to make a lot of changes that will appeal to Nigerians to shelve the protest completely. Instead of making these changes, they are busy trying to stop people from protesting. So this is the problem here. It is an existential threat to Nigerians. The kind of hunger and suffering they are going through right now, nothing will stop them. They've been united by the hardship and the hunger. So if this protest descends into anarchy, the government must be held accountable because part of their job is to find solutions to everything. If people are demanding, give us this, give us that, it is the responsibility of the government to answer them and give them what they are demanding. Power belongs to the people. The money is not theirs. The people in power are enjoying the wealth of Nigerians. They appropriate the wealth anyhow they want. Nigerians are saying no. We no longer want you to spend our money this way. This is the way we want you to spend the money. But the government is insisting that they will not listen to Nigerians. So whatever happens during the protest, the government must own it wholeheartedly because they didn't do anything to stop the protest from taking place in the first place. All they are doing is intimidation, trying to intimidate poor, hungry people into not coming out to protest. Criminalizing protest is not the way to go in a democracy. The people in power today, they enjoyed protest. In fact, it was protest that brought them to power. They used that protest to convince Nigerians to vote for them and they voted for them, they came to power. Today, they are trying to criminalize protest that it is not the way to go. How can they say no to protest? It's absurd. Now, let's end with the interview human rights lawyer, Efion, granted Arise TV. You can see how Nigerians feel about the whole thing. Let's take a listen. My concern is that the government is the one that is feeling the perception that this protest is going to be violent. I'm very active on social media. I haven't seen any indication that so any person or group of persons are planning to unleash anarchy in the country. And let us even ask the question, how come that it is only when people are protesting against government or people want to carry out rallies against government that people will suddenly create this imaginary intelligence report that hoodlums, miscreants are going to unleash violence. I have also, we saw Asari Dukubo leading protests in support of Tinubu during the tribunal. Asari Dukubo, the SSS did not gather any intelligence that hoodlums will hijack it. As a matter of fact, I have also seen groups planning to hold counter rallies and protests in support of the government. The police have not said anything about it. So this impression that some people are planning to burn the country is just fiction. If the government is serious, they should understand that people have the right to protest and stop giving us fake intelligence. The IG says he wants the name of the protesters, he wants to know the routes, he wants to know the founders. The SSS on the other hand says no, we know those who are sponsoring it. So which one should we go for? This clearly shows that they are not serious. You cannot in one brief say, you know that foreign mercenaries are the one planning the protest, you have uncovered those behind it. At the same time, you are still asking for the identities of those who are behind the protest. Let the Inspector General of Police let the the, the, the the SSS and the army, the army surprisingly, is issuing a statement on a protest. We are not in a military dictatorship. What is the business of the military issuing a statement on the matter? That can't even be tolerated in a democracy. Let the military remain in the barracks. The police should deploy in line with the provisions of the police act, should deploy police to ensure that those who are protesting are protected. Because the court have even made pronouncement on this matter. Let us assume for a second that they actually have real intelligence, which I believe they don't have, that they have real intelligence that this protest can turn to violence. The court have ruled that the police cannot stop protests because of apprehension of violence. That the proper way to approach it is to ensure that those who are planning the violence are protected 
and the protesters are also protected. So let them stop creating this apprehension, this nightmare that the country is going to burn. Nobody is planning to burn the country. People are tired, people are hungry, people are desperate for solutions. The government is not providing solutions. And why does the president have to wait till the 1st of August? He can, wait, he can start this moment, start this moment to effect the changes that people are asking for. Reduce the number of ministers, right? Cut the cost of governance. Tell Nigerians you are not going to purchase a new presidential jet with 150 billion. Tell us you have abolished the office of the first, the first lady and the office of the first daughter and the first son because we now have office of first lady, office of first son, office of first daughter. Can you imagine Fola Shade Tunubu making a statement yesterday threatening Nigerians not to protest and you are telling people that you are running a democratic country? Begin to show us that you are serious. Send a bill to the National Assembly before the 1st of August. Met IREF. A, a legal requirement in our election. These are things that people are asking for. You can do this thing before the 1st of August, but they are not doing that. Begin the fight against corruption. You are not fighting corruption. You are telling people not to protest. You are not changing the country. You are telling people not to protest. You are buying, you, you are investing billions, about 22 billion, to build a new residence for the vice president. You are planning to build 5 billion to presidential yacht. And you are saying Nigeria should not protest. Even the Agbado that Tinubu promised Nigeria, people cannot buy anymore. You are talking about minimum wage of 70,000 that cannot buy a bag of rice. Nigerians have to protest. That cassava and abado that he promised us, he should provide it. Nigerians don't have what to eat. And you are telling people not to protest. Right. What is the alternative?